Hello! Hi! <laughs> Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel Artif Design where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainability, and stitching and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome and if you're returning, I thank you so much for coming back and joining me this week. It is Halloween week 2020 here in Maryland which means my children and I are celebrating Halloween -y things, you know, making pumpkin pie, we're going to carve the jack-o'-lanterns, and it includes dressing up. One of my life, my goals over the last couple years is to dress up like Moira Rose. So I decided to put on my Moira wig, my feather boa from the Crows Have Eyes 2, or is it the Crows Have Eyes 3? And <laughs> come and talk to you today all about counted cross stitch. Yes, I've got the jewels and and the, the lots of makeup, so we are ready to get started. If you are new to Counted Cross Stitch, I welcome you. I will not be dressed like this every <laughs> week. <laughs> this is special because it is Halloween week. I encourage you to check out all of the amazing floss tube channels here on YouTube, and there are so many cool things to learn about Counted Cross Stitch. The hobby is amazing and it has truly changed my life and I want to spread the joy of needlework with you. So without further ado, I'd love to show you my two cross stitch fully finished objects at my FFOs for this week. One project that I have been working on pretty monogamously this entire week and a little bit about my miniature cross stitch samplers for the children's dollhouse. And I have a couple books to show you I got at a thrift store. So I'm really excited to talk all about needlework. So let's get started. This boa. Oh, all right. Is that a little better? Here we go. I was so excited that I found a frame at the thrift store that I was able to put my piece in. And this is the Blackbird Designs Cardinal. And it came out of the Home for the Holidays book. And I finished it, again, this is a thrift store frame. It's a plastic Humco frame and made in the USA and it's, it's, I didn't paint it. I didn't do anything to it. The back it has like this particle board and it had, so I, I used the existing footprint, used the matte board and I laced this completely and it fit perfectly into shape. This, I could have, I could not have asked for a better frame. I was jumping for joy, just so excited to get the frame. <laughs> I just love it so much. So here we go. I, I really thought this was not going to be done this year and I was proved wrong. <laughs> the fabric is a 32 count raw linen and it's got the polka dot screen printed uh, on it and then my stitching over top of it. And I will say that don't be afraid of using the screen printed fabric. You'll just, just be aware that those, those little paint where the paint is, where you're putting your stitches in, that you're just gonna have to maybe press a little bit harder or make sure you're counting so you don't miss a stitch in that paint. So, oh my gosh, love it. I'm so excited. And in case you did not know, my favorite holidays, Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day. So after Halloween, I will start putting away Halloween decorations and then we will immediately start with Christmas stuff and putting up all the Christmas. So I'm so excited to have that done. Let me get my boa. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this over here. We'll put it right here. Okay. <laughs> the next fully finish that I have is Here Lie My Needles. And I'm so excited about this one. This is a design by Shakespeare's Peddler. I decided to just do the center motif. There's also like a checkerboard border and then it says here lie my needles, some old, some rusty, uh, some bent, some broken, like and then you, there's a space to put like a piece of felt to put your old needles. I decided to, since this eight by 10 standard frame, it didn't, the, the, it didn't look 
perfect in the standard 8x10 so I went ahead and add this decorative trim and I added it behind and then I have I put my needle minders here with the needle so I still feel like I'm in keeping with the piece and the spirit of the piece of holding the needles and yeah I'm very excited this is on 18 count Ada that I dyed myself with Rit dye it was like a combination of red and fuchsia that I kind of just mixed together to make it. And the Ada was like an off color thrift store Ada that I got. And I'll show you as an example a little bit later what I mean by <laughs> off color thrift store Ada. Don't be afraid if you, I mean, if you like to die, you know, don't be, <laughs> don't be afraid to try it and dye some Ada. This is stitched with one strand of the silky cotton petites and also, and, but then if I wasn't using silky, I was using Victorian motto sampler threads and that I used two strands with. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I did all my own conversion, but I did it as close to the DMC conversion that Teresa Kitten Stitcher included in the pattern. And that is still available on her site, kittenstitcher.com. I had a couple people ask me about Kitten Stitcher, and I just wanted to let you know, oh my gosh, I can't take myself seriously in this wig. <laughs> I just wanted to let you all know that I am a huge fan of Kitten Stitcher uh, as a business owner, as, as a designer, and as a fellow floss tube video maker, but I am not, I do not work for her. She has never paid me <laughs> nothing. So if you have any questions specifically about her shop, go ahead and, um, hop on over to her site and ask her. She was tremendous enough to sponsor, uh, my two year floss tube anniversary by doubling the gift card amount for a giveaway winner. But as, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not I'm not an employee of hers. So I just wanted to get that out of the way in case there was any confusion because I know I gush about her a lot. I gush about a lot of people a lot. Okay, oh my gosh, Moira. I'm invoking look like at that snake. Like the Adam and Eve stuff. Okay, those were my two fully finished objects. My last week's video, I failed to grab my little sampler that it's the sampler sticker from Heartstring Samplery, and I had a couple questions about it. This is a sticker sheet. I want to say she came out in like 2018 or 2019 with her designs custom put on stickers. I got this gifted to me when I made a purchase at Threads Entwined, which is also a wonderful online needle workshop. And so I have gifted, I have this set of gifted stickers this was gifted to me by karen thank you karen and i made a frame using about seven different layers of the thin cardboard and what i mean by that is like that thin cardboard that if you say you were going to make like macaroni and cheese in that box or the cereal box cardboard and so i cut and shaped and then painted it and then this plastic i put over as glass someone asked me if i'm using real glass no here is like one of those big containers of strawberries, the, the Watsonville or the Salinas, California strawberries, and they come in the big plastic things. So I, you wash and then you can cut out using the plastic and make glass with that. So I hope that helps if anybody is interested in turning your stickers into little miniature samplers. <laughs> for your own dollhouse. <laughs> oh, somebody asked me, or someone made a statement, a couple people, about how they're too old for, made a statement that they're too old for dollhouses or that their grandkids are too old or their children are too old for dollhouses. And I say, no, you are never too old to enjoy yourself. If you like miniatures, there's no age limit, except, except, of course, the age limit uh, for safety, like for the small parts, you know, nothing under the, you know, nothing under the age of, th no one under the age of three, you know, the small parts. And if you look at a lot of the miniatures that you buy that you don't hand make, they say ages 14 and up because they're delicate and small and breakable and 
you don't want a child to swallow them, all the things. So if you think about it, like the minimum age to be playing with fancy doll houses is age 14. So you're never too old <laughs> to enjoy yourself with doll houses and make miniature samplers. <laughs> I mean, why not? I <laughs> Speaking of that, uh I'm going to I'm going to I swear I'm going to come back to cross stitch, but I'll show you really fast what I've been working on this week. This is my little rainbow quilt for the dollhouse. The The children asked for a rainbow quilt for the, the nursery, and it's a little bigger than it probably needed to be. I'm using the selvage, and it's the white and the stars that I cut out from the Cindy Shake alphabet banner that I made a couple weeks ago. So I used the selvage on the quilt and then these little squares. I'm so excited. Uh, so at the thrift store, I bought this little box and it says keepsake quilting. I think it's an older, it was like a quilt shop. I'm not sure if it's still around. I don't know where it's located, but it's like all their little samples of all their colors. So what I did Look at that. It's smaller than a mini charm pack. How cute is that? So I pulled out all the little colors and I made the little quilt and I have more to make more because you know, hashtag make all the things. So that was one of my things that I worked on this week was the mini quilt for the dollhouse. All right, thrift store finds. I got this tin. And I thought the tin, the, when I looked at it, it looked like it had a really cool greeting card, like a cross-stitch greeting card in there. Think about the, the, the Hallmark Seasons greeting cards that came out in the 80s that were also patterns and all the things. So I looked at that, I'm like, oh, that's a really cool card. Then I look closer, it's not a card. It's a, it's a real cross-stitch. So I love this. It's on very, very, very fine linen. And it looks like they stitch over four strands because the linen is so small. It's, it's really pretty. And it says quilts are like friends, a great source of comfort. Yes, yes, yes. Love it. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm... I don't know if things are in focus or not. <laughs> And they put a batting on the back of it. And yeah, it's really cute. It almost, to me, the way it looks, I want to say it's uh, machine cross-stitched. Like with an embroidery machine. But even if it's not hand done, I still think it's adorable. <laughs> so I, I picked that up because I could not help myself. I picked up some more of the squares here and I haven't gone through them yet, but I could not help myself. I got a container of white buttons because hashtag I love buttons. I know, I know I have too many collections. I got a bag and here we are talking about the cross stitch fabric. So I paid and I've never gotten a, a pack this big before cross stitch. I paid $4 for this and I feel very grateful. Now, a lot of these in here, I would not, you can, a lot of these you can use as is Navy 14 count, which means 14 holes per inch. If you are just starting out in cross count and cross stitch, I would definitely suggest trying out first with a 14 count Ada. The dark one might be too much to start with. So I would recommend you start, if you wanna do a colored Ada, like a, a light blue like this, this is a 14 count. This is vintage. I don't believe this brand is around anymore. I'm just using this as an example, 14 count Ada. And if you have eyesight problems or uh, problems with your hands, like if you have arthritis or different other ailments with your hands, you know, having a nice, having a nice Ada is so helpful. So there, that's an idea. And I love stitching on Ada. I just showed you my finish that I had on Ada. Then these are here. I got an 18 count white. And then I got, so here, this is like an off 
yellow. Not my favorite color. It's not white. It's not cream. It's like a yellow. This is would be a perfect candidate for me to dye, like writ dye, over dye to make a pretty Ada. And that's what I did with this. So that originally was like one of those off the off white yellow from the early night eight late eighties, early nineties, and then over dye it. So don't be afraid to pick up clean, undamaged Ada that you can over dye. I got, this is, oh, I didn't even see that. This says it's a pillow square unfinished for cross stitch. That's pretty cool. That's neat. Sweet home, sweet home pillow. And that's dated 1992. All right. And then there's some other various counts, um, 18 counts. And then here, this is like the, the mesh for needlepoint, which is, I, I don't, I won't use it, but that's okay. And then another like, like sky blue. And then this is like an oatmeal Ada. And this would be fun to over dye as well. I've noticed that, oh, this, I'm sorry. It's called, it's from Leisure Arts. It's a Rustico. So I've noticed that the oatmeal and these types don't dye as well. And I mean, like they don't pick up the color as much, like absorb as much color but it'd still be fun to, to play around with it. I took the chance of, of, of buying that for $4 because I saw this piece of banding. Oh, there's a jet going by. And at while I am a new cross stitcher, I have never come across banding, linen banding before. And I am so excited. So I got a piece of linen binding, uh, binding you make your samplers the banding I'm not binding I excuse me I said it wrong banding not binding banding <laughs> the banding I know that sassy jacks um stitchery she carries the the banding and she goes overseas specifically to buy it so fancy and it came with and this is unmarked it looks like a Karen water lilies I could be wrong though but it's got that variegation and it looks like silk. And then another piece, this is anchor, an anchor floss. So unmarked, but I'm excited that I finally have a little piece to try. But wait, there's more. I do not do needlepoint, but I could not leave these behind and it's they're silk and ivory, half silk, half Murano wool, made in Switzerland. Beautiful. And I, I don't know what I'm going to use them for. If I could do like finishing. Oh my gosh. Oh, they're so soft. I mean, do people, can you knit with that? Do people, or is this just for needlepoint? I don't know. I don't have the answers, but it was so pretty. I could not, I could not leave it behind. This color, oh, periwinkle. So pretty. So new things. All right. The next thing, the next couple things I have to show you are the books. I got some books at the thrift store and I also, so let me, oh, I get so excited. I start stumbling over my words. I got three books to show you. I, they have a special at the one thrift store that if you buy a bag of books, uh, so instead of them priced individually, they're priced by the bag. So, oh darn, I had to buy multiple needlework books. I have never seen this book before. It It's called Creating Historic Samplers by Judith K. Grow and Elizabeth M. McCrail and by Payne Press and it, it goes through like how you know what's a sampler what kind of needles how do you want to create a sampler and then there's some black and white photos of samplers in here I tagged three of the samplers in here and they, it had they it had it comes with the pattern the chart so look at those look at those birds I love it. So that, that chart is in this book. And then 
the next one, oh, these two. So there's the Adam and Eve here. This is charted in the book, but I liked this house and I know several of you, uh, uh, several stitchers love stitching red houses. So when I saw this one it, and it looked kind of Christmassy to me with the, with the, the green window shutters and it looks like it's all like, like shuttered up for the, and there's like a dog. <laughs> so I just, I thought that was a cool red house for those of you who like stitching red houses. And then the one that's on the cover of the book. Yeah. So this is, again, I had never seen this before. It, it has history of samplers, photos of it. And most of these are from the Whitman sampler collections, like the Whitman chocolates that will be coming out in season very soon. Tis the season to start seeing those. And the Whitman sampler collection is in the Philadelphia, it's part of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So, and then some, some pretty, a good, a good collection. I, I believe most of the photo, the samplers are available. You can actually find them online at the Philadelphia Museum of Art uh, and look on their online collection. However, what is cool about this book is that it has the patterns for those samplers. And this book came out in 1974. So here is the contents if you're interested. All right. The next book I was tickled pink to find because I have never in all of my searching used bookstores, thrift stores, yard sales, all the things. I have never found a black work embroidery specific book out on my ex uh, out on my expeditions. <laughs> so I am pleased to announce that I found my first ever black work embroidery book. And it is The Art of Blackwork Embroidery by Rose by Rosemary Drysdale. Look at that mod mushroom. Most of the patterns are off to this. Most of the patterns for the designs in this book are side by side by the picture. So it'll be very difficult for me to, to do a flip through for you. But it goes over again, you know, supplies, what you need. And I liked this, and it's a historic, like the multiplication table. It reminds me of Kathy Barrick, Carriage Health Samplers. She's done some of those cool, updated, cool things. So again, all, and then just tons of different designs, and it's hard because I, to, to show you, because all the pattern, it's all graphed out and marked. But there's some really cool designs in here. I like this. There's the butterfly and the leaves. Here's some colorful pictures. And again, this is an older book. I know there's several artists and artisans that are um, doing black work embroidery stuff, but it's saying too, you know, don't forget you can do stuff on textiles. So this book came out, I didn't look at it ahead of time. <laughs> this book is uh, 1975. And it, you know, said, look at the black work embroidery on her fancy stuff. So here we go. All right, the last book I have to show you, I'm very excited about. I am tempted to do a full walkthrough of it. As you can see, I have marked the patterns that interest me. This book is by Ted with two D's, T-E-double-D. Hey, Ted Arnold. <laughs> and it is called Cross Stitch Patterns for a Mother Goose and Words of Wit and Wisdom. And the, the first half of the book, it's all the, the pictures, the completed photos of the, the completed works and then everything that they show in the front of the book is is charted in the back of the book. So if you wanted to do, you know, the three ladies singing or the little baby and all of these are like nursery rhymes. Um, here's one sampler here. 
and then like Valentine's Day. And what I like too is it's by month. So there was January, here's February. So there's Valentine's Day. And you could always color convert, you know, the blonde hair to brown and change the skin tones. I liked this and it made me think of all of those that like to stitch the Americana. I really liked this George Washington. I thought he was really fun. And then the monochromatic here of the animals. Lots of really cute things. Here's March. They're picking clovers. And then look at that king in the pie. The, the sing a song of sixpence. Here's, I mean, just very, all the little whimsical things and the daffodils. And you could, you could stitch it just the photo or you could stitch it with the, the nursery rhyme. And there's, here's April, Easter in the April showers, rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Here is baby and the feather pillows. Here's hens. Super cute. I have never seen, I've, I've never seen this book before. Another in bouquets. I'm, I just thought it was super sweet. This has little mice on the bottom. March winds and April showers bring forth me flowers. Here's the chicken and the girl, the tree. The fair made who? The first of May. Yep. And then pigs for June. Another sampler. You could make that into a red house. You could do a color conversion. Keep the chart, but just change the colors. Uh, I I really liked this. The uh, with silver bells and cockle shells. Yep. Yeah, Mary Mary. You know, stitch this one, the traditional one, and then you go over and you stitch Lindy's stitches. Needleworker, needleworker. Winter and the, the different seasons. July, I liked this with the little sand castle. Again, and all of these patterns are in the back of this book. I will have, if it's available, I will have the link in my Amazon storefront. I have an Amazon where you click the link and it'll take you and you can shop my store. And so I've gone through and I've put it from what I can remember. <laughs> I've gone through and put my, the, all of the craft books that I've talked about on this channel and stuff that I'm all into and the supplies that I've used and talked about on this channel. I've gone through and put that all in. So hopefully it's a little user friendly and you can see all of it. Um, and I'm going to keep adding to it with all the things that I like. <laughs> this was super cute. I thought the kitty cat in the cupboard here, again, that would be super fun. It changing the colors. That is great. A little a bouncing B the cats in the cupboard and can't see me. There's a rocking horse. I promise this one's almost done. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I marked this. Look at this. Who doesn't need a ghost? Not one, not two, but three ghosts eating bread. The three little ghosties sitting on posties, eating buttered toasties, greasing their fisties up to their wristies. Oh, what besties make with such feasties. I don't think I made that rhyme properly. <laughs> the jack-o'-lantern. Old man and a puppy, sleeping baby. That's like full coverage there. The little sleeping kid. Good night, sleep tight, wake up bright in the morning light to do what's right with all your might. I like this October the owl. He's a hoot, I tell ya. And who doesn't need a nightcap like that? a true nightcap <laughs> and Thanksgiving stuff and there's the pretty like the bunny moon I see the moon and the moon sees me God bless the moon and God bless me and this book would not be complete without the quintessential goose December yes 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 but wait there's more Again, the first half is all the patterns, and the second half is, oh, here's the skunk. And then it talks about samplers, and he go, he talks about how he was very drawn to 
historic samplers and then wanted to do the crossover with Mother Goose and cross stitch. So again, that was really cool. And it's uh, cross stitch patterns. I, did, I took the jacket off because I kept making all that noise. All right. I hope that I have inspired you this week, you know, dress up for Halloween or a random Monday the week before Halloween. <laughs> I hope I've encouraged you to create and make make all the things. I am excited to continue on the dollhouse front for the children and I have and I purchased another frame so I need to frame blessings be thine. So hopefully I will be able to show you that very soon. I also am going to be doing a Facebook live with Just Cross Stitch magazine over on their Facebook page. Uh, on Monday, November 9th. Um, we're going to talk about my Whaley Love Winter Pattern that's in the December issue of Just Cross Stitch. So I'm really excited about that. So I've got a lot to do and I'm so excited. I appreciate you all and I just, I gotta, I do. I, I gotta, I appreciate all of you and I want you to know that you matter, your stitching matters, your hobbies matter. Don't let anybody take the joy of making and creating away from you because you are worth it. You are fantastic. And I send you all the love. I hope that you have a beautiful and safe Halloween if you celebrate and whatever capacity that might be. Mine will be at home in costume eating sugar with my children <laughs> and stitching. <laughs> all right. Have a beautiful week and I'll see you soon. Love you. Take care.